Hey, Joey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Good to talk with you. Yeah, good to speak with you. Thanks uh, for uh, the time. Yeah, thank you. You know, we're quite excited because uh, you're coming up here just a, a week away from uh, your new tour coming up with Saxon. You guys ready for that? Yeah, we haven't uh, we haven't done any, um, you know, haven't rehearsed or anything yet, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we're all ready mentally. Well, you know, it's funny because uh, with this album, with Wind Hands Down, it's great because you've got this great reception from all these uh, longtime fans, and then a whole new slew has come out of Generation for it. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm noticing that too. There's a lot of people who, um, it's a funny thing with our band, it's not that funny actually, but it's a peculiar thing with our band that a lot of people, like I think our name and our perception uh, perceived us. It's, it's bigger than we actually are. <laughs> and I think a lot of people know the name Armored Saint, but a lot of, there's still a lot of people who have never heard of us, have never heard the music or uh-huh. anything about us. And for a lot of people, they are, have discovered us through this record, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because I've been hearing the same thing. When I, you know, sometimes people will tell me, oh man, I got this great new band. And I'm like, new? Are you crazy? So I turn them on to all the all the albums and it's like this, like, hold their eyes wide open. They, you know, they're like, yes. So it's really cool to see that. And then the neat thing is the generations are coming out. You've got, you've got the kids are really getting into it too, which is awesome to see. Yeah, it's, um, I think a lot of that is due to maybe the, the age of the parents. Um, I think a lot of a lot of young people, um, their parents grew, maybe grew up listening to us, or at least grew up listening to the genre uh-huh. that we all came from, and that generation. And so their kids now are like, you know, teenagers, 14 to 20 years old, and those kids are familiar with all the bands that were coming up when we were coming up, and yes. so we're getting some of that fallout. So that's amazing, you know, that's, that's a cool thing. That is that is huge, and it, you know I've got to say with this album it's interesting because uh, um, it's definitely you can feel the passion in this album with it, and it's it actually also gives a lot of um, the lyrics. It's very personal. It's got a good connection with the with the crowd. How was it with the recording process with this album? Um, it's it's great. Uh, we we work in a slightly unusual way, but um, we. Um, you know, John and I write all the music together, and we we it's done in a very insular way. We are alone. Mm-hmm. Um, the group kind of gets involved when the songs are finished, written, and then we get together, start actually recording the record. So it's sort of done in like pieces, uh-huh. pieces a little bit separately. And so we do, you know, the songs. Everybody gets music, or, you know, prior of obviously. So we're all getting absorbed by the music for, it takes us for like a year, 14, 16 months to write this stuff. So everybody is involved in it during the process. But we get together and we, you know, start doing the tracks. And mm-hmm. we do the thing where we do the drums and then the guitar and the bass and we're all hanging out and doing it all together and spending time together and just, you know, hanging out, being yeah. knuckleheads. And it's, it's fun, you know, it's, it's really, especially this record, there was a super, super low stress uh, level. We just we kept everything lighthearted and fun. Yeah. And stressed over anything. And everybody gave amazing performances. And, um, you know, John did all the vocals. We did those together alone here in my house. I have a studio here at my house. And we did all the vocals here. And, um... You know, John, this record is probably the, one of the most revealing for John. He's always kind of peppered his records with some of his some of his own personal feelings and insights throughout the years. But this record has a lot of it. So, um, you know, I think he's just come to an age where he's comfortable with just being himself and wearing his heart on his sleeve. Uh-huh. So um, he does it with his, with his close friends, but he's never really done it with the public in this way. So it's, been, it's pretty cool. 
It is. It's a great, because, I mean, you got this, it, it really comes across to this album. It's got the honesty and the passion just really shines through that. And like you we were saying, it is a fun time because you get that vibe with, with it, you know. It comes across really well. I, you know, got to tell you, one of my favorite tunes is, is the Dark Track Dive. I love that song. <laughs> it's cool, yeah. That's a fun song. You know, it was interesting to do. Um, we, w we wanted to do something a little bit, a little different. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't want to write just a quote-unquote ballad. Yeah. We wanted to do something that was, you know, that has, is close to me and has influenced me. I mean, I'm, it's no secret, obviously now it's no secret, that I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, when John came to me, he said, you know, I would really love to do something with a piano. And I said, well, let's just, let's just do something that's, like, not not what you would expect, you know, not like a power ballad, yeah. you know, a big, you know, tempo change and a big, big gigantic climactic ending and everything. Let's just keep it kind of steady and hypnotic and dark and um, the, the piano sections are great. The song is, it's a great platform for John's voice. Because uh -huh. he, he, for the most part, I'll, you know, we write stuff that's super high energy and he's always really high register, and he's singing loud and just, you know, screaming sometimes, you know. And he's got a, such a great voice, and it's nice for him to be able to have a chance to just sing yeah. in a low register, and it, it doesn't have to go up in volume, you know. And it just highlights it. That, that Definitely, that song definitely highlights it. Yeah. And it's interesting because you talk about the energy. You guys bring an incredible energy to the stage. I mean, do you guys do some type of pre-show ritual to harness all that energy before you get out there? <laughs> some secret ritual or something? <laughs> we don't really have any rituals. I mean, nowadays it's, it's, it's about, um, maybe we're a little bit older, so we spend at least 20, 30 minutes literally stretching out. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to get the blood, blood pumping, Stretch your body out, stretch your arms, your legs, your neck, your back, and all that. And um, we just get ready for the onslaught, you know. We've never really had a ritual, but we, we've always had this sort of thing with us. Our attitude has always been like, you know, when we go on stage, this is even from day one. Yeah. And, and that is that we're just, our, our whole intention is to go out there and, for lack of, and I don't mean this literally, but I mean our intention is to go out there and just, completely kill everybody. Yeah, yeah. Want to go out and be so aggressive and in your face. Um, when we come out on stage, we all run up to the front, you know, so uh -huh. something that we've just always done that from day one. Um, so, you know, we don't really have any rituals, but there's always had, we've always had this sort of attitude in our minds, like, you know, getting ready for the storm, you know. Yeah, and, and it's neat because the audience is, I mean, when they're at these live shows, it's neat because they're in the moment, you know, and, and it's great to see that everything can come out of them as well because they, they'll sometimes, you'll see them try to match your guys' energy and they, they just intensely just give it right back to you guys. Yeah, I mean, we've, this is something, again, we've, we've had since day one and mm -hmm. we've always had a really close rapport with the audience. Um, there's been many, many times, we don't really do this so much now, but there's been many, many times where we would jump into the crowd or, you know, yeah. like fall into the crowd halfway and they push us back, <laughs> throw the guitars into the crowd. Um, we, were, we just always had a really close connection with the crowd. That's always been super important with our band lives. Uh, we've never been ones to stand in the back and look at our shoes while we're playing. Yeah, it's yep. Not, not, it's just not in what we do. <laughs> it's true, and and that's the neat thing because for them it is it's it's their release of whatever they're going through. You know, at one of your concerts, it's gone. They can just get rid of all that. You know, anything that's on their back is gone, and it's let loose with it. And I love that you guys bring that for them. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. That's what we've been trying to do. It's just, I mean, you know, it's it's um, the whole thing with music, and for us, has always been like this escapism. You know, um, kind of why we got into music was to get away from my parents mm -hmm. school yep. or yep. the authority or whatever and it's that's part of the whole thing with music and enjoying music is it's a place to just go away from the world you know even if you're going to see it like a 
traditional four-piece jazz group in a, in a small jazz club. I mean, you're there. You're there because you want to go, you want to get away from the streets and the traffic and yep. the daily life. You know, you're there to, to be in a place that's nowhere else. So. so important to keep that like up in our area out here we're really trying to you know bring back the live shows and get you know a lot of the schools are doing away with still doing away with the music programs and don't realize that that's you know one of the things that keep these kids going is the music programs or just music in general yeah it's a, it's a terrible thing i mean you know it, any, anything in that artistic form whether it's painting or drawing or culture or musicians or design or even sports to some extent, you know, it's like you need to have that you need to have that um, place in your mind to be able to shut everything else out, you know, and be be in the moment, you know. Yep. Yep, that's it. And and for you, okay, I gotta ask you, you do some incredible non stop touring and everything and uh what do you like to do in your downtime? Because, I mean, you're busy touring. Here they're going to be going out with, uh, you know, with Motor Sister in the U.K. in January. What do you do in your downtime? More touring. <laughs> I, catch, I, I catch up with uh, all the things that break in the house. When I go home. <laughs> um, so I come home with a long list of things that need to be done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's stuff like that. It's, you know, just daily life stuff. Cool. That's cool. And also, you because you mentioned you have your studio, you do some producing as well. Yeah, I have a studio here at the house, and um, I work um, mostly lately. I've been doing mixing, so bands will hire me to mix their records mm -hmm. and stuff. And I can work from home, and I can still pick up my kids from school and still do that kind of a thing. And so, yeah, if I'm not if I'm not um, being Mr. Dad, I'm engineering something <laughs> here at home or something like that. I love it. I love it. Well, we're looking forward to, you know, you guys come back because you're going to be also on, is it the Monsters of Rock Cruise as well, you guys? Yeah. Um, Armored Saint, is, we got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. We're, um, we start this tour with Saxon mm -hmm. next week, and then um, I have some time off from Saint doing Motor Sister and Motorboat, mm -hmm. and I'm going on tour with Stakes Warning in October. Oh, cool. But then Saint uh, has another show in California in November. And then early December, Armored Saints going back to Europe, and we're doing a handful of shows there. Awesome. A couple of shows we're doing with Accept, so oh, that'll be fun. That'll be great, yeah. And then, yeah. And then, um, like you said, uh, in January, I got the Motor Sister thing in the UK. And then we got uh, Monsters of Rock Cruise with Armored Saints. And we're currently booking um, more festivals for next summer, going back to Europe. Um, May, June, July. Wow. So that'll be that'll be cool then. And we're still we're still got some places we wanna get to. We wanna we wanna get to uh, South America. We wanna get to Japan. There's some territories in Europe we haven't hit yet, so there's still some work to do. That is cool. That is cool. We're going to tell everybody to make sure to keep up to date on your sites as well. You know, be, check the tour dates and everything. And and lastly, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience and your fans? Well, we tomorrow we're shooting a new video um, for um, an exercise in debauchery. It'll be our second video for this record, and we're, it should be really cool. The ideas, at least on paper, are super amazing. So mm -hmm. I hope it comes out the way we think. Awesome. And, um, so that should be fun. Looking forward to that. And um, other than that, you know, uh, we are super grateful uh, for our fans. You know, they've been sticking with us for 30 years plus. And um, it's just amazing to see their loyalty and their dedication to 
at least, you know, not that they like everything that we put out, but at least their willingness to hear what we're doing and to support us in that way. And it's been really, 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 really cool. And we can't do this without them. So we thank them for that. That's awesome. You guys got a great dedicated fan base, and I love being part of it as well. And, and I wish you guys luck and safe travels. Awesome. Thank you.